Hi. Today I will be analyzing some deeper facts of fiction named Surfacing. Surfacing is a psychological fiction written by Margaret Atwood in 1970s. The setting is Quebec in uh, Canada. And uh, you know, if you want to know the story of this uh, fiction, please watch my earlier video where I have detail in detail, uh, I mean, uh, you know, retold the entire story so, then, so that you can connect well with what I'm going to talk today. Today, I'll be just discussing the writing and, you know, what is my perspective and, you know, you are free to comment and let me know your perspective and I'll get to learn something. So, let's begin. So, here in this fiction, there is a narrator who remains completely anonymous throughout the fiction. There is nowhere her name is mentioned and it is everything is written from her point of view or her perspective, you know. So, she herself is a protagonist and uh, who is she? Then she is an artist and uh, she has come to a, an isolated island in search of her missing father. Okay. And it is entirely written from her perspective as I told you and detailing the events as they occur but all these events go in black flash. It's very interesting read. You should read this. Now, she is a freelance uh, illustrator and who illustrates the books. So, she is on an assignment and she could uh, be anywhere and still do the assignment. So, that is what the background about her. But she is unable to concentrate, note this point, and come up with actual creative work and she works in spurts, you know, and she is not consistent. This itself gives a cue for narrator's state of mind. I told you in the beginning only it's a psychological novel. So, how it connects? We have to connect the dots everywhere. All right. So, what is the point of view in this uh, work, you know, in this uh, novel? The author, uh, Margaret Atwood, actually recreates narrator's raw and unfiltered psychology. Whatever comes to her mind, she is telling. Generally, whenever we speak or whenever we convey, we filter and what is right, what is wrong. There are so many things churning in your brain, right? You don't speak out whatever comes to your mind. But here it is completely unfiltered psychology. It is all about the narrator's observation and the memories as she recollects. Okay. And also she speaks in the first person and doesn't address anybody in particular. Okay. There is no specific audience in this novel. So she just goes on talking. Her It's her voice that is coming out. Now, her voice is objective without any filters, as I told you already, no, no psychological filters. It only relates what the other characters say and do, but that is a kind of subjective in the sense. It is her perspective about what the other person is thinking, what the other person is doing, because she herself is telling the story. So, the entire thing goes like that. She interprets the psychology behind each character in the novel. That is a beauty, like, you know, you must read this. Now, the narrator uh, seems, you know, completely unreliable at times, uh, even when she relates to her own memories because, you know, sometimes she comes up with one version and she quickly changes it. So, that is why I use the word she is not consistent. She is inconsistent with whatever she is talking. And, uh, you know, the tone of the narrator whenever she is uh, telling the story also, it is a kind of nervous, it is anxious. And uh, it's it's a very tense uh, stone, I would say. It is tense, like a tense stone. And uh, she is, you know, she is wise, she is educated, and uh, she is introverted, but she is also paranoid as the, uh, you know, story progresses. So, these are all the different things what they come and what she wants to, I mean, you know, what she wants to, she herself thinks that this is something humorous. I'm going to say no, that is not humorous. That is rather cynical when you read it. So, she uses everything in the present tense. Okay, her uh, uh, communication is in the present tense. But the events that uh, tri uh, trigger the past memories. I hope you are getting what I'm trying to say. Then there is a major conflict here, you know. She struggled to identify her place in the society. It means there is an identity crisis for this narrator because she feels completely alienated and completely, you know, I'm not that type, those kind of thing, you know, that kind of a thing. 
and uh, she feels that you know uh, the ideals of marriage or religion doesn't suit her she imagines herself as a kind of rebel i would say when we think of uh, the rising action here the narrator search for her father and her memories of her mother and you know confrontation with her own past her observation of uh, her companions and uh, reactions to american uh, you know encroachments on the wilderness all these things na they promote a kind of uh, or they trigger a kind of emotional numbness in her this is a post colonial novel okay and uh, the climax is when diving the narrator experiences a vision of her aborted baby this triggers and releases several repressed emotions see what happens is there are different kinds of truth okay there are some truth which you don't tell others there are some truth which you don't tell yourself also so humans keep on repressing those memories and those thoughts and you know most of the people i have also seen whenever anybody faces crisis they don't even want to talk childhood trauma i don't want to talk about it or you know abusive father no please let me not talk about it so this is actually escapism why you want to run away from the situation even if you talk about what you went through you could be completely uh, you know uh, as an onlooker you could talk and you could analyze the situation and see to it that that doesn't percolate in your parenthood that's what i would uh, say anyway so she is a kind of uh, like you know completely um uh, suppressing her thoughts so so when she is swimming there in the water diving and going she sees some kind of a thing about it thing it's not a baby also something like you know some, some fish or animal whatever the about it thing i mean the uh, dead thing comes up she thinks it's her own baby and but she is able to release all several repressed emotions that is one good part over there then this is a rising action and climax now the following action is the narrator abandons her friends at the end of the novel she abandons her friends and undergoes a kind of psychological madness okay and uh, in which she actually regresses like a child you know uh, to her childhood and uh, literally lives like an animal you i mean earlier video i have given more explanation so you please watch that generally what happens is whenever anybody is too much troubled or they get into severe depression or you know they develop any kind of mental illness people tend to regress to their earlier years if there is a, a you know like alienation from the mother they they become so regressed and enter it could be an adult of 40 years or 50 years but if they regress like that they will refuse to eat any food but they just want to drink milk they just want porridge so these are all the psychological games so here uh, i mean you know the regression is uh, it goes very bad so actually falling action is like uh, as i mentioned she regresses and becomes childlike and she be, she doesn't relate herself to the world she doesn't relate herself to her friends and she abandons quickly and goes away now theme is actually language as a power for humans how are we different from others see all the animals also they are they do of course they don't have a well developed brain like us that is understood but also another thing is the most important thing for us to thrive and you know create something called civilization is our ability to communicate you know that communication skills are the ones it may be in the form of our drawings like cave cave paintings and cave drawings or our sculpture or our paintings or our uh, speaking or writing you know all these things these are the ways and means humans communicate because of this communication that i mean we our race has survived and we are able to understand so many things so language is one of the very powerful tools so that itself is a uh, is a theme over here at the end it comes i'll be talking about it and also total alienation of women because it's also it also this novel also has a feministic tone all right now the motives used are like you know american expansion of power like so many motives are used over here now foreshadowing technique also is used in the novel 
see uh, her boyfriend this narrator's boyfriend jo she will be fiddling with the narrator's ring and uh, that later be, uh, you know comes up as a demand for his marriage so that is used like that and also the narrators believe that her brother must have had vision after drowning foreshadows her own vision when she nearly drowns okay and also the narrator imagines that her father is hiding somewhere and the search party will end up you know digging him out or i mean you know he will he might just appear like a mad man and create a ruckus or create this thing so actually she tries to whatever she has learned she tries to pick this up from her parents because she thinks that her father is hiding at the end of the story she herself hides behind the bushes and she just moves away from alienates herself and all that so that is also another interesting thing and uh, also the narrator's constant rumination on language foreshadows her yeah, a later search for a primal language so these are the things now i will be discussing the more about the narrator the very fact that narrator remains completely anonymous over here in this fiction shows a kind of alienation a psychological alienation and away from society where she finds somewhere she is not fit into that society which she is living in the causes and effect of uh, narrator's uh, psychological transformation also remain somewhere mysterious you know there is a time at one point she gets just emotionally numb and uh, isolated by she is overwhelmed rather and that leads to isolation she is so overwhelmed by all the roles that she plays as a mother as a daughter as a wife as a lover as a friend or as a i mean you know working woman so whatever those kind of things so part of the cause is grief somewhere that is deep hidden she is troubled that is what is the thing and part is due to spending too much uh, time in the wilderness so first thing is like there is a some repressed emotion and the grief and plus you you are completely isolated and you are spending time in the wilderness so that triggers the emotional uh, you know trauma for her and uh, but the narrator's madness also uh, you know uh, stems in the large part of her systematic social alienation every human being we say oh she is lonely he is lonely he doesn't want to mix she doesn't want to mix but there is a deep reason for everything so that is what we see in this novel about when we think about her and of course like then what is the feministic theme i also said that this is a feminist this novel has a feminist approach see i could explain so woman's place in all the facets as human as wife as a religious person as a mother as a sexual being also the narrator's madness seems to arise from her anger at all the standard roles forced upon a woman women rather okay so her response to this alienation is to become like an animal at the end when she start running a mock and you know she lives like an animal she actually sees animals not as beasts and uh, without uh, without a reason and she feels that all the animals except humans they are all like you know graceful creatures that are any day better than the humans at uh, peacefully coexisting with nature in a way you just think about it let it be any animal a wild animal will attack you only when it is hungry otherwise it is just left to itself or when it is threatened in the periphery but we humans humans are a different category of animals whether you need to attack others or not or whether it is needed or not like you know humans i think somewhere like because of too much of intelligence in well developed brain uh, most of the people become manipulative and then start harming others I, this is just in general i'm talking about not in uh, particular to anybody anyway so the result of the narrator's transformation is a greater understanding of her place in society and this understanding comes out out of necessity i would say because the narrator realizes that complete withdrawal from the society will result in her death 
this is a kind of absurdistic idea see i had made some videos on absurdist plays also so the whole world is useless everything is there so how you are going to place yourself and you know get out what you want to get it out or what you want to contribute so that becomes your thing so ultimately she realizes that she can't be running away from the society running away from the world she cannot completely isolate and cut off so she has to bear with these things and she reconciles and she comes back to normal mode and she reaches to new conclusions that how she will cope up with the society's ills again it's all a coping up mechanism i have to live to i have to cope up she resolves to join without succumb succumb uh, without succumbing to the pressures that once actually subdued her she was totally upset that you know okay this is uh, falling on me and i have to do this one fine she day she says what the hell i am doing i don't have to give in to this i will you know face and i i have that uh, strength and i have that power so that is the best idea that is uh, conveyed over here now let us see how the author brings out the concept of language as connection to society throughout surfacing narrator's uh, feelings of powerlessness are coupled with uh, you know an inability to use language there is nowhere a big commentary that oh she doesn't know to talk she is feeling this it's not that way very subtle uh, points come in between say for example when she goes mad uh, she cannot understand david's words nor she could speak uh, against his advances but she doesn't give in she escapes his advances but she couldn't uh, you know give it back to him in the real sense so that's also a kind of traumatic experience similarly when the search party comes and uh, she cannot understand their speech at all because of their accent she couldn't understand what they are talking and uh, the, her only defense mechanism is flight so she just wants to hide and go away words seem to betray her she cannot express what she is doing so she starts yelling and runs away and uh, narrator also maintains a false hope that she can reject human language totally as she can just uh, she imagines to reject the entire human society both these things are impossible you cannot live completely isolated from human society however good or bad whatever it is that is your perspective actually and uh, also you can't live, survive without language like animals all right so she admires the very fact that you know she admires the animals okay they know the type of plants like you know which without even reading about them without naming them and uh, when she goes mad actually she was not to teach any language to her child and just bring her up like animals she herself starts behaving like an animal taking the raw plants and unwashed and just trying to eat them and you know, complete insanity sets in at that point of time you know but uh, again eventually she conquers her alienation by embracing the language so actually this is a very beautiful work of uh, margaret atwood please read it the copy is available on amazon you could buy that watch my first video to get uh, the complete uh, story and uh, i will be providing that uh, link in the description of this video so if you have liked this video please uh, share it with the like minded people and uh, i love to share my knowledge that's why i'm here nothing else no other motto so you could also write your perspective if you read the novel and how do you feel so i will get to learn something from it. it's not always that i want to give i want to also get some input from you So thank you so much if you are not yet subscribed to my channel please do so thank you thanks for watching